for this section, we're looking at additional research and we're focusing on materials and components that you're going to use in your models or and final product. So this one uh, fulfills two sort of criteria. The main one is a section which says fully appropriate materials and components selected with extensive research into their working properties and availability. It also covers an area in section one, which is extensive evidence that investigation of design possibilities has taken place throughout the project with excellent justification and understanding of possibilities identified. So it sort of fits in with you continually researching. So as you create a design idea, you might go off and do a bit more research because you've discovered something else. So you focus on materials, but whilst you're doing that, you might have another idea for another product. Uh, for this, you're going to call your slides material research or component research, or you might combine it onto one page. You will all need to do some research on materials that you're going to use. So it might be materials and components, but it will definitely be materials. So you'll look at materials and components you're going to use. You'll explain why you need a certain material and the properties that the material offers. Uh, you'll compare materials that you use in school with materials that might be used in industry. So if you're going to mass produce this product, would it change? So you might make a plywood model or an acrylic model in the workshop, but your product that's made in industry mark using oak or uh, polypropylene or ABS. So you can compare the difference. Explain why you uh, have picked certain components, if you're going to use an LED or switches in your final design. Describe the purpose, describe the function, and explain how to enhance your design. And there's a checklist there at the bottom. So the first bit which, is, which everyone will have to do is look at materials. So these are examples of materials that are available for you in the workshop at school. MDF, plywood, um, corrugated card, acrylic, um, bamboo sheet. We've also got obviously some pine as well. So these are the materials you might use. For each one that you could have used, you name the material. You're going to discuss the material properties in terms of physical properties. What does it look like? What colour is it? What type of finish has it? Does it have a texture? So is it smooth, glossy? Has it got, has it got like a matte finish to it? Um, does it need finishing? So for example, MDF might need finishing. So you might put a veneer on there. So you might cover it with a natural timber to make it uh, enhanced. You could also laminate a design on there. So you could laminate a piece of paper on there with a design on there to add a graphics element to your design. With plywood, you might wood stain it to enhance the colours. So rather than go for natural timber, you might want one that's coloured. You might talk about acrylic. So acrylic is self-finished. It's glossy. So you don't need to add a finish on there. So there's benefits of getting materials that are self-finished. As well as looking at materials, think about the processes you'll use to cut the materials. So are you going to use it by hand or laser cut? Talk about the working properties. So the working properties are how the material will work in terms of the product. So you're buying a material or using a material that needs to be durable, flexible, stiff. Has the product got some element of being brittle to it? So acrylic, a drawback of using acrylic is the fact it's brittle and when it breaks it's sharp. Obviously MDF and plywood are quite stiff and rigid materials, but you might want to turn into a living hinge to make it more flexible. So talk about those properties in there. On the next slide, there's a list of properties and a list of more materials that might help you with this. You talk about the materials, or the properties you need the material to have to ensure your product is successful. So does it need to be rigid? Does it need to have a curved side? So do you need it to be flexible? So what makes your product successful? Include images, for example, like I have on here. So include images of materials. So if you're talking about plywood's physical properties, an element of uh, the lines on the sides, the layers of veneer that go through plywood, the fact that the veneers are going in different directions, so you see different colours, looking at different parts of the material, a picture would enhance, enhance that, and it, you can use the picture to help you describe the material. For those that haven't used bamboo sheet before, the bamboo sheet looks similar to plywood. The bamboo, which is obviously curved, is cut into strips and glued together. So a picture of that might uh, be useful and that picture might help you describe what it looks like in terms of its physical properties. Compare the materials to what you might use in industry. 
you must discuss whether or why you're using a material in terms of is it already been recycled can it be recycled and or is it sustainable and explain how that works and what is sustainability what is a recycled material how could your material be used after it's been uh, used as a product so what's the life cycle uh, of your material after you've used it this slide is demonstrating some of the properties on the right hand side in orange it's also got some different materials in there and it's also got some uh, processes that you may use in school or in industry this one um, if you are enhancing your product with lighting or a speaker or some programming you, know, you might do a page like this so on here you've got a micro bits so if you want to combine this with computer science and some programming you can do if you're using lights to indicate whether something's turned on or off you use leds you might you might be creating a light so the product might have a, a light function on there <coughs> uh, speakers are quite popular in projects so talk about the speaker and the components on the circuit so don't just talk about the speaker talk about the resistors the capacitors the actual uh, amp chip you're using as well obviously switches over there if it's got some sort of electronics on there and then you might use components such as nuts bolts and screws if you want something to be temporary or adjustable so you might want to use something like that in your design rather than just using PVA glue so similar to the materials one name the component describe the components uh, function does the component work with another um, component for example LEDs and resistors work together uh, you might have capacitors in there that work with uh, resistors so you, you might want to talk about that type of uh, component in your product talk about how this is enhancing your product so you might use a micro bit and do some programming to make your product more interactive which makes it more desirable so you could talk about that element um, could you have made the component yourself and I've asked this question because I put this question in sorry because a lot of people talk about buying hinges but why don't you make the hinge because if you make the hinge it'll show a uh, greater level of skill you'll be able to customize the hinge to suit what you need um, also the hinge might match the materials you're using so you can make a hinge out of plywood or MDF which matches your product if you are buying a hinge in you, it might be because you can't make the hinge small enough so there is a reason for buying components in but it's just a question of could you make it because you could enhance your project further and get a better grade by making something yourself and then is there any other components that you could use in your product so there might be some pro uh, components out there that you uh, think are very useful to have and that you would like to include but aren't available through school so you could talk about components that you'd like to enhance your product next in the um, GC books we should have a copy of um, are there's several pages in there covering material properties and material selection that you might want to use and then finally this is the checklist to make sure you cover these in your work so discuss materials and properties you might use discuss the uh, material properties um, have you comp compared materials used in school with materials used in industry and have you discussed why you are using certain components and how they will enhance your product <coughs>